Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I want to talk to you a little bit more about PlayStation VR, and more importantly, I want to talk about why PlayStation VR is going to be successful, and really why the success or failure of VR gaming in general kind of hinges on PlayStation VR. And I think the first thing people need to understand is that you can't really promote virtual reality. What makes virtual reality special is never going to come through in a YouTube video or a Twitch stream or a television commercial. VR is unique in the fact that it has the blessing of it sells itself, but at the same time it has the curse of you can't sell it. All you can really do when trying to promote your VR is let people know that it exists. The more people that know it exists, the more likely they are to buy it. But the fact is that Sony actually expects and is projected by the end of this year, and end of 2016, there will be 56 million PS4s sold. And I'm assuming they're throwing the PS4K or Neo or whatever it's called into those numbers as well. So what I'm saying is by the end of 2016, 56 million people are projected to have half of what they need to make PlayStation VR work. But they're only projecting 1.6 million sales of PlayStation VR by the end of 2016, which of course does include the launch and the holidays. And so those are really, really low numbers for a new system being launched. And Sony is treating this like the launch of a new system. It's just a new system that piggybacks off of the old system. And that's important because 1.6 million units is not going to make VR a success. It needs to do quite a bit better than that. But Sony's keeping its its vision realistic and realizing that not very many people are going to buy it initially because you can't really explain to people or show people how how good VR is without getting them into a headset. So the way that you sell VR is you get those 1.6 million people. Let's just say 1.5 million to make it an easier number to deal with. You know, I'm going to be one of those 1.5 million. I plan on pre-ordering it as soon as I can. I missed the initial pre-order date, but I'm sure there's another one coming up probably at or around the E3 time. And I'm going to pre-order it. And what's going to end up happening is I'm going to show it to, let's just say, four of my friends. And of those four friends, three of them will have PS4s. Of those three, two of them will think VR is really cool, and of those two, one of them is going to say, it's cool enough for me to buy. So, by the end of 2016, they have 1.5 million units sold. Then they, you know, by the end of quarter two of 2017, after those 1.5 million people have shown it to their friends, you know, they're going to have 3 million units sold. Then those 3 million people are going to show it to their friends, and they're going to, by the end of 2017, have 6 million sold. And all of a sudden, you're on your way to a successful video game medium. And what really makes all this possible is the price tag. And I've heard a lot of people complaining about the price tag, claiming that Sony lied about it being $400 and not including the camera and everything else. But I think that this is really an example of Sony taking itself out of its normal... Uh, normal practices, we'll say. Because, you see, not bundling the camera with the VR headset is actually doing the fans a solid. That's Sony reaching out to the fans and trying to increase the popularity of VR. Not because Sony is so great to their fans. I'm not trying to claim that Sony is is some wonderful company that we should all be praising. But the fact is that they could have sold the VR headset for $450, including a camera, and everybody out there who already had a camera would be forced to buy it again. And some people would be turned off by that, and some people wouldn't buy it because of that. If you're on the fence, and and they do something like that, and it makes you mad, you may not buy it. And Sony is trying to ensure that every single person who is on the fence falls onto the side of wanting to buy the VR. So they're selling it in increments, and when you think about like the price of VR, VR is very expensive. When you look at Oculus is like $600, I think. Vive, I think, is around seven or $800. On top of that, you need a machine powerful enough to run it. When you really break it down, Sony VR is by far the cheapest one, and it 
gets down to a price that most people will find much more palatable. Because when you think, if you have zero equipment at all, no computer, no, no PS4, nothing, you can go from no equipment to playing VR on a Vive for around $2,000. On an Oculus for around $1,500 if you buy the bundle that they're offering. Or on a PS4 for $900. It's a significant, significantly cheaper piece of equipment. And what that does is it gets it into more people's homes. It lets more people have VR so that there's more people showing VR to their friends. Thus, VR is growing. And then, of course, if you already have a PS4, they offer the bundle of the headset, the camera, and the move controllers for $500, which is probably around the same price as buying each thing separately, but it just comes all together, which is kind of nice. It also comes with PlayStation VR Worlds, which is the game that they've been using to demo VR all along, so that should be fairly exciting and worth a little bit. So that does save you a little bit of money. And then, of course, if you do have the camera already and maybe even the Move controllers, you can just buy the headset by itself for $400, saving you even more money. Sony is going out of its way to do two things. Number one, make VR as cheap as possible so that more people can get it into their homes. And number two... Make VR as cheap as possible while still turning a profit. And that's another place Sony has been getting criticism because people are like, you know, you're turning a profit on this? You could have made it even cheaper. And a lot of people don't like that. And in case you don't know, you know, saying, oh, a business wants to turn a profit on the piece of equipment they're selling sounds odd to you. The, the fact is that most of the time hardware is sold at cost or at a loss to the company selling it. The way that they make up that money is in software sales. So for example, you might buy and and I don't I don't actually know for a fact if this has happened or not with PS4, but let's say that PS4 is sold at cost and Sony doesn't make any profit on PS4. I haven't looked it up, but it's possible. That's the way a lot of consoles work. So you buy the PS4 at a loss for Sony, and then Sony makes up those costs because they've sold so many PS4s that game developers will pay Sony more money to allow them the licensing to make games for their system. And then those game developers make up money by selling more games because PS4 is the largest player base available to you. And so that's how it all works. The idea is get it into as many homes as possible and then make up the money on software sales. Now the thing that makes PSVR different is the fact that VR is not going to sell that well initially. And so it's going to take a lot of time. As I explained earlier, people need to buy it, and then they need to show it to their friends, and then their friends need to buy it, show their friends, their friends need to buy it. And you'll probably never actually get anywhere near the 30 million units that PS4 has currently sold, or the 56 million that they're, they're planning on selling by the end of 2016. But you can get eventually up to a, re a respectable number that will catch the eye of major developers who will then start developing their games. Rockstar Games has already said that they're waiting to see how well VR catches on before they start working on something like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption for VR. Uh, Bethesda is doing the same thing with things like Skyrim. And really, the games that are being developed right now are are mostly indie games or first-party games. Like, Riggs is a first-party game. Like, Sony basically commissioned Riggs to be in existence. And then a lot of other games like 100 Foot Robot Golf and stuff like that are being made by indie developers. And the major studios are kind of shy about getting in on PSVR. And so what needs to happen is, like, companies, when they do something like this, when they gamble on something or they invest in something, what, they're, what they do is they say, we are willing to lose X amount of money before we pull the plug on this project. So let's just say that with PlayStation VR, Sony is willing to lose $50 million 
before they finally pull the plug and say it failed. What they're doing by selling it at a profit instead of selling it at a loss is extending out the amount of time that they are able to allow VR to fail, hoping that it turns around and succeeds. So instead of you know losing $50 million by the end of 2017 and pulling the plug, they might be able to extend it out to the middle of 2018 or even 2019 or even you know give it until the end of the PS4's life cycle and the PS5 starts coming out and before they decide that VR has failed. And so the price tag is extremely important because the price tag is about two things. It's about getting it into as many homes as possible while at the same time limiting the loss to the company and extending out the amount of time that they can give VR to succeed. So I guess the ultimate conclusion to all this is simply the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift are better headsets than the PSVR. There's no denying that. They are capable of more. They, uh, you know, the the PC community is going to get better innovations. They're going to get... more games probably and things like that and ultimately a better experience but the problem is that it costs several hundred dollars more than the cost of an entire ps4 setup just for the pc to run the oculus rift or the htc vive what the ps4 does is it gives people an entryway into vr with a top level while not being the best at least a top level uh experience a good library of games a decent level of technology and the low price tag low enough for people who are on the fence about vr to get into vr and on top of that it is it is estimated that right now there are about 17 million pcs owned by people capable of running the oculus or vive There are, at this moment of this recording, 36 million PS4s already sold. And as I mentioned several times, they're expecting to have 56 million sold by the end of 2016. So, ultimately, the the price tag, the accessibility, and just the dedication to making VR a thing is what's going to make PlayStation VR a success. And ultimately, PlayStation VR's success or failure will have a detrimental impact on VR in general. So thanks for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, Be sure to check out my previous video on what I want to see from PlayStation VR at E3. And subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And goodbye.